I want to just read uh, four verses to you tonight that have been uh, laid heavy on my heart this afternoon. I had uh, something else prepared, but we feel that the Lord would indeed have a word for the meeting tonight uh, for each of us here. I want you to listen to these four verses. There's no need to turn to them. I will read them for you. The first one is found in Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and in verse 8. It says, There is no man that hath power over his spirit to retain the spirit, neither hath he power in the day of death. The next verse I want to read to you is found in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 12. It simply just says these words, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak evil against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. In Second Peter chapter 2 and in verse 9, we read again, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment. Our final reading is found in a well-known verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, and verse 2. The Lord saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We know that the Lord will add his blessing to the public reading of his word. I'm sure you know the train of my thought in the closing moments of our meeting tonight. We're after that little phrase, the day. You know, today has been a day where men and women have been maybe celebrating anniversaries. Maybe there has been those and they have been celebrating their birthday. We celebrate on Christmas Day, New Year's Day, Easter Day. I want to talk to you tonight about four days found in the Bible that has got something to do with every single one of us here tonight. The first one I want to talk about briefly is in Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 8. It's a, it's a sad day. And it's the day of death. You know, dear friends, tonight can I tell you and be honest with you that you are closer to death tonight than you have ever been before. Can I say to you tonight that you are looking at a man who is dying and I am looking at people in cars tonight and you're dying. Every single one of us is near death than we ever have been before. We have heard from Kalina just a moment ago that this night could be your last night. And indeed, today has been the last day for thousands around the world. Maybe you ask me a question, why do we die? You know, there's been those and they've been standing in an open grave today. There's been fathers have had a broken heart. Mothers have wept over a husband that is long gone, never to return. Death has come. Death at times comes suddenly. It comes in the squeak of brakes and the smash of metal. Could happen to you before you go home. Sometimes it comes slowly by the bleep of a monitor in a hospital ward. Sometimes it comes slowly. But make sure, friends, it comes surely. Death will come. The scriptures remind us that it's appointed unto man once to die. And after this, the judgment. You have your birthday once a year, Christmas once a year, but you only die once. The scriptures remind us, wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. We're dying because of sin. You know, you could take that little phrase in the word of God, and you'll find that all have sinned. Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've already quoted it in Romans chapter 5 and verse 12. Wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. 
You could turn to Galatians chapter 3 and verse 22. And it just says simply these words. That the scripture has concluded that all are under sin. And as you sit in this field tonight. And if you are not saved. If you have never come into that great experience with the Lord Jesus. Can I say tonight that you are a sinner under the power of sin. Under the penalty of sin. Not only does the word of God say that we all are sinners. You'll find that little phrase, ye have sinned. Ye have sinned. You know, dear friends, you could turn maybe to your wife. Or indeed you could point to me tonight. And you could say, ye have sinned. I have sinned. You have sinned. But then you'll take that little ver that word, we have sinned. You'll find it 24 times in your Bible. We have sinned. And you know, dear friends, we could go into every car in this field tonight. We could draw alongside you. We could put our arms around your shoulder. And we could say, we all have sinned. I could say, ye have sinned. And I could say, we have sinned. We all have sinned in our heart tonight. And that's why we're dying. Not only can you read in your Bible, all have sinned. Not only do you hear, we have sinned. And ye have sinned. But nine men or nine people in the Bible said, I have sinned. You'll find Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, was the first man who said, I have sinned. I wonder tonight, have you ever come to the place in your life where you say, have said, I have sinned. You'll find that Balaam said it. David, the great king of Israel, said, I have sinned. You'll find that Ju Judas, whenever he went in with his 30 pieces of silver in his pocket, and he cast them at the feet of the Pharisees. He said, I have sinned, and that I have betrayed innocent blood. I have sinned. I wonder tonight, have you ever come to a realization that you have sinned? Can I say tonight, you have not sinned against a man, but you have sinned against God. That's why a man can't forgive you. That's why a man could never forgive me, because it wasn't a man that I sinned against. It was a holy God. And can I say tonight, with a measure of earnestness in my heart, no man, no matter who he may be, where he's from, can give absolution for sin. It's only the Lord Jesus can do such a thing. I have sinned. You know, dear friends, tonight, as you sit in this field, and we've already said it, the day of death is coming. It's coming. It's nearer now than it ever has been before. And if you die in your sin, you will go to a lost eternity. Where the Lord Jesus said, the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Can I say tonight, religion will not take away your sin. Can I say tonight that works can, will never take away your sin. Being here tonight will never take away sin. There's only one tonight can deal with your sin. He dealt with my sin. Thank God he dealt with Harvey's. He dealt with John's and Gillian's here. And Clinette's. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you die in your sin, this day of death was to come. You would go to a lost eternity. If that day of death was to come to you where you are now, where would you be? If another man had to drive your car out of this field tonight, where would your soul be? If, a, if we had to come to your home tomorrow and gather at a wake, we would know very well where your body is. But where would your soul be? It's appointed unto man once to die. It's an appointment you can't postpone. It's an appointment you can't delay. It's an appointment you can't rebook. And for all you may know, the appointment could be, have you booked in for tonight? The day of death. Secondly, I want to talk to you a little bit about the day of judgment. The day of judgment. You know, dear friends, there's a day of accountability. There's a day when God Almighty deals with sin. 
And if you're in this meeting tonight and you die in your sin, there is a day where Almighty God will judge you. You'll find in Revelation chapter 20 that great apostle of love, he said these lovely words. Read them whenever you go home. He said, I saw a great white throne and him that sat upon it from whose face the heavens and the earth fled away and there was no place found for them. And I saw the the dead, small and great, stand before God and the books were open. And there was another book, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead that were in it. And death and hell gave up the dead that were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And then it says simply this. That death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, which is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. I tell you tonight, dear friends, the reason that we stand here is not to pass time, nor is it to tickle your ears, but we would warn you tonight from a heart that's concerned that if you come to the day of death, And you die in your sin. The Lord Jesus said this. If you die in your sin. Where I am there. Ye cannot come. There's a day of death. They tell me that almost three people die in the world every second. And some second will have my name. And have your name upon it. I ask you a question tonight. Are you ready to die? There's a day of death. There's a day of judgment. But we read there in 1 Peter chapter 2 of a day of visitation. And I want to apply this very quickly to you. That in God's wisdom and in his wise economy, God would convince men and women of their sin. And the Spirit of God would come And he would convict men and women of their need of salvation. And even in this field tonight, God by his spirit could come and visit you. The day of visitation. You find in Isaiah chapter 10 and the verse 3, it says, what shall ye do in the day of visitation? You see, dear friends, tonight, the prayer of our heart would be, That God, the Holy Ghost, would come and he would convict you of your sin. And that he would show you the great need and the danger that you are in. That if you were to die in your sin, you would go down to a lost eternity. I trust tonight that God would speak to your heart. There's a day of visitation. We read in the Bible... Of the word of God, of how it says in Genesis chapter 6, My spirit shall not always strive with man. That word to strive can be illustrated by an eagle that is hovering over its prey up in the sky. Hovering. The wings are fluttering. But you know there's come a time maybe whenever that eagle would be scared away. Can be chased off. And I wonder tonight, maybe time and time and time again over your life, God has convicted you of your sin. He has shown you the danger of your peril, that if you were to die, you would never get into heaven, but you would go down to a lost eternity. You know, dear friends, we dread to talk about that word. It's not something to be shouted about. Hell is real tonight. There's men that were here, I'm sure, in this field, and they're there tonight. You'll find that there's a rich man there, Luke 16. You'll find in Luke chapter 12, there's a farmer there. I wonder, will you be there? I trust tonight that God would give you a day of visitation. That God in his wisdom would visit you and show you tonight That if you died, and we've already said it, 
you would go down to a lost eternity. That your works are of no avail. That your religion or denomination is of no avail tonight. The scripture says, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There is a day of death, maybe today. There is a day of judgment. There is a day of visitation when God comes near to a man or woman, young person, boy or girl, and shows them of their need. But thank God tonight I can close this thriving by talking to you about the day of salvation. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. I tell you tonight, dear friends, if you're not saved, if you're still in your sin, if the judgment of God is still resting upon you, thank God that I can say to you today, today could be your day of salvation. I dare not say tomorrow could be, for you may never get to tomorrow. I dare not say come back next Sunday night. I couldn't say that. But I would plead with you tonight that you would make today your day of salvation. Behold now, not tomorrow, not when you get home, not whenever you get home and make a little bit of tea, now. You know, dear friends, the only moment that you're assured of is now. Now. God requires that which is past. I heard the story recently of a nurse that was nursing a man in a hospital ward who was dying. He only had moments to live. And she went over and he, she turned the pillow. And he turned to the nurse and says, Nurse, it's not my pillow. It's my past. It's my past. I tell you tonight, dear friends, there's only one who can deal with your past. And that is the Lord Jesus. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Paul the Apostle could say in Romans chapter 1, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Salvation. I wonder tonight, have you got salvation? Was there a day in your life when you realized that the Lord Jesus Christ died on a cross for the world? I did, he did. But did you ever realize that he died for you? Died for you. That hymn that Harvey quoted, I was thinking about it earlier on today myself. And the chorus goes like this. It is finished. Yes, indeed, finished every jot. Sinner, this is all you need. Tell me, is it not? When he left his throne above to come and do and die, everything was fully done. Hearken to his cry. The cry that came from the lips of the Lord Jesus was this. Finish. Finish. Nothing more to do. The day of death. The day of judgment. The day of visitation. The day of salvation. And I have already quoted it tonight already. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men. Whereby he must be saved. Let me close with a hymn that I have come to love. And the words of it are simply this. Jesus, I will trust thee. Trust thee with my soul. Guilty, vile, and helpless. Thou can make me whole. I have none in heaven nor on earth like thee. Thou hast died for sinners. But thou hast died for me. Jesus, I must trust thee. Pondering thy ways. Full of love and mercy all thine earthly days. Sinners gathered round thee, lepers sought thy face. None too vile or loathsome 
for the Savior's grace. Jesus, I do trust thee. Oh, I trust without a doubt that whosoever cometh, I will not, thou wilt not cast out. Faithful is thy promises, precious is thy blood. These my soul's salvation, salvation, these my Savior God. You may say to me tonight, you have got money. You may say to me tonight, you've got a farm of land, prestige, popularity, good looks. Tell me tonight, could you shake my hand at the gate and say, I have got salvation? Salvation. The Lord Jesus died on a cross to save you, friend. He gave all that he had to deliver you, that whenever you come to the day of death, you'll not go down to the lost eternity but it'll be absent with the body, present with the Lord. He died on a cross, the just for the unjust, that he would bring us to God, that you and I would never face the day of judgment, the day of visitation, the day of salvation. Would you answer me one question before I sit down? What's this day going to be for you? Could this be your last day? Indeed it could. Could this be your day of visitation? Where God has been speaking, convicting you of sin, Showing to you tonight that if you are to die in the state that you're in, you'll go to a lost eternity. The day of visitation. The cry of all of our hearts here tonight would be that you would make this the day of salvation. You know what you need to do to make it your day of salvation? Believe. Believe and be saved. That's what our brother said. And there was one other word that he said, not only believe, but come. Come now, for all things are ready. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Let us pray. Father, we just bow in your presence tonight. Lord, we have felt the weight of the words that we have been speaking. That we realize tonight that the, all of us indeed are near to the threshold of death than we have ever been before. We are conscious, God, Lord, that while we have been situated in this field, there has been those, indeed many, who have went over that threshold unprepared to meet their God. And Father, our cry would be, Lord, that this day would be the day of salvation for those in the field. That there would be those that would come, not to a man, nor to a creed, church or denomination, but they would come to the feet of thy Son and ask him into their heart. And Father, we praise thee that he said, him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Lord, I pray that you will make this a day of visitation where God, where men and women will be continually convicted of their sin until they come in repentance to the feet of our Lord. And so, Father, we close our time today with an air of solemnity. We are conscious that we may never meet again in this field. We're conscious as we may meet this time next week, there may be those that could have went over the day of death, never to return again. Father, our cry would be, as we've heard from our brother Harvey and from our sister Clinette, that men and women would leave this field transformed by the Spirit of our God. And Lord, we pray that you will do that tonight. We thank you that salvation is of the Lord. And we just thank you for our little time together. 
We pray that the word of God will bring forth its fruit in season. And we bless thee for everything that has happened tonight. Take us to our homes in safety, we pray. We ask it in the lovely name of thy Son. Amen.